Good morning, everybody. It's Brother Anthony. Uh, it's been a while since I've been out here. Maybe a week or a few days. I don't know which one. But um, I just wanted to share something with you. You know, my family. That uh, I've been going through a little turmoil. Just about uh, not questioning my faith or anything like that. I know where I stand in Christ. But just uh, wrapping my mind over some family issues. Uh, my little brother, you know, he's been heavy on my heart with his alcoholism and other life choices that he makes. Uh, my son, Anthony, he has been going through some struggle. <clears throat> and he doesn't live with me. But he's been struggling in certain areas. And I'm not able to speak to him because of the terms of his mom. I'm not able to speak to him right now, but I know he needs me, you know. And, and I've been, I've been trying to figure out what I can do, you know, allowing God to to work in this in this situation, so that. I can be there for my son, you know, but I know that prayer works, and, and I still got to have faith, so I've been digging deep into my word, and, and, and getting this, trying to find this answer to, to combat the, the, the battle that's going on, so I want to read this here, out of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 through 39. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for all the prayers that have been coming my way. Thank you for the love, the joy, the peace, the, the relaxation that you have brought into my life. I invite your Holy Spirit into this house to minister to me and to my family and to continue to, to guide us in the right direction. And Lord, we just continue to magnify you no matter what. Continue to look for you no matter what. And Lord God, you know the desires of our heart. Your word says in, in Psalms 37 that if we delight ourselves in you, that if we give you our delight, that we delight in you, you shall give us the desires of our heart. And Father God, we delight in you right now. We seek a relationship with you. We seek a, a better, <clears throat> a better um, understanding of your word for our lives. <clears throat> a better understanding of your will for our lives and a better way to live. And Lord, we just continue to praise you no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. 32, 10, 32, Hebrews. But recall the former days in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have no need of for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. You know, this, this right here is speaking a lot to me right now. Mainly because I have not lost my faith in God. You know, I think it's okay to to not have, not know all the answers to certain things, but to always trust in God, no matter what. You know, I'm not a very smart man. I have a lot of issues in my life still, but I know that once I start trusting in God and doing things God doing things God's way, that um everything's gonna be all right. 
you know, Philippians 4.13, you know, all things, I can do all things through him, you know, and, and I understand that I'm a new creation, but sometimes struggles are going to come. You know, Jesus knows we're not perfect. He knows that, that hard times are coming. You know, he talks a lot about uh, being rooted and grounded, you know, like the story of, of the man who built his house on the sand, opposed to the man who built his house on the rock. You know, and why is he telling us these stories? Because he wants us to build our houses on the on that rock. You know, he doesn't want us to have a, a, a foundation that's going to slip, because this world is going to bring troubles. Look, you know, look how they treated him. You know, if 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 any of us would go through something before we met Christ, you know, we would be like that man whose house was built on the sand. You know, we would fall if if the same things happened to us. You know, and Jesus said that if, if the world persecuted me first, you know that they're going to persecute you. You know, so he wants us to come to him with a firm foundation so that when hard times come, we're able to stand up against the walls of the devil. We're able to stand up against anyone who opposes Christ. And we're able to, to stand up against anyone who, who, just anyone who opposes us. You know, it says, but I recall the former days in which you were enlightened by God's word, that you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. You know, we, we, we got to embrace those who are weak. We got to embrace those and continue to pray for those who are going through struggles. You know, uh, my brother Felix says, continue to pray for me. You know, and I and I see that every time I watch his videos, that uh, he's embracing me. You know, this is how a brother from the other side of the um, other side of our country is 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 embracing me. You know, and he's lifting me up in that spirit, and and that's what we're called to do. You know, we're called to to um, be companions of those who are who are ill treated and 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 mistreated and whatnot. And then it goes on to 34, For you had compassion on me and my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. You know, uh, no matter what I have in this garage, you know, these may be my, my, my possessions, you know, my car, this might be my, my stuff, you know what I mean? But that stuff is just material. You know, the, the, the things that I have in heaven are far greater than what I have here on earth. You know, I keep hearing people say, you never see a, a U-Haul being driving behind a driving behind a hearse, you know, we're not going to take anything we have with us, you know, yeah, it's cool to have enjoyment in this life, it's good to have, uh, to, to, to spoil yourself sometimes, but don't get attached to your things, you know, because eventually they're not going to be your things no more, you know, but the things that we have in heaven, the things that we invest in in heaven are always going to be there as long as we have Christ in our lives. And it says here that, therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Do not cast away your confidence in God, for it has great reward. You know, always trust in Him. You know, like it says in, Psalm, in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. You know, trust in Him. Don't lose that confidence. Don't lose that confidence. Trust in Him. Rely upon Him. Give him your all. Cast your cares upon him. You know, direct your life to Christ and don't lose confidence in him. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance. You know, you have to push forward. You know, things are coming. Like me not being able to speak to my son. Things are coming my way where I have to have endurance. I have to be able to stand up. Because if I don't, I'm going to look back.
tired of going backwards. I have to have endurance. I have to be able to keep running this race that I'm running. I got this Bible study Sunday school class at church, you know, and these kids look up to me. And I have to keep running. I need endurance. So that after I have done the will of God, I may receive the promise. You know, you guys have to keep running. When things seem so tough, you have to keep pushing. You have to keep running so that you may receive the promise. It says, for yet a little while. <clears throat> and he, he who is coming, will not slack. Now the just shall live by faith. This is us. Those who are justified. Those who are, are, are truly, truly believers. Those are the ones that are going to live by faith. Those are the ones who... who who know that God is going to work in their lives. Those who have confidence in him. And not in this flesh. It says. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back. My soul has no pleasure in him. If anyone draws back. If anyone looks back. And never turns back around. My soul has no pleasure in him. God is not looking for quitters. Brothers and sisters. God is looking for winners. But we. The promise that we stand on. But we are not of those who draw back. We are Christian men and women. We stand in Jesus Christ. We have that firm foundation. We know that we are winners in Christ because the word tells us that God gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says that thanks be to God because gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The other verse, uh, Isaiah 54 says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, and, and all these verses and all these promises that tell us that we are going to win. No matter what, it says, we are not of those who draw back to death, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. You know, and, uh, excuse me for busting out tears, but I'm an emotional guy. I'm going through a struggle right now, and I'm going through a struggle just like you. You know, I'm not perfect. You know, uh, <clears throat> there was a time in my life where I didn't have a place to live. I didn't have a yard to take care of. I didn't have a car to drive. I didn't have a family to, to love me, you know. But today, God has blessed me. You know, even though I'm going through a little struggle with my family, you know, and uh, with, with things that I need to put in God's hands, I know that I'm on the winning team. And I know that if I, have, if I keep enduring, that God's going to bless me. You know, and if you keep enduring through that struggle, God's going to bless you. Don't ever lose your confidence in God. Don't ever lose your trust in Him. Don't ever lose your hope in Him. Always keep your mind focused on God's Word. You know, stay saturated in that Word. Stay saturated in prayer. You know, and God will make sure that you turn out on top. You know, <clears throat> I was driving in Chowchilla yesterday. And uh, there was this field. You know, it had, it had, it was this field just empty. And there was one lone palm tree standing up in the middle with no with no leaves with no branches it's just the stem part of the of the of the palm tree and you know and it reminded me of of standing tall in the storms you know this palm tree's roots were so rooted into that ground that it was the only tree standing you know and uh <clears throat> it looked like it had withstood a fire um but it was still up, you know. That's more that's like most of us. You know, we maybe get we may get burned a little bit. <clears throat> we may get our leaves ripped off and our and our branches torn off. But if we stay rooted in Christ, you know, he's gonna make sure that we stand. 
He's going to make sure that we get through it. Even when everything around us looks looks uh, destroyed and, and deserted, we're still going to be standing if we continue to be rooted in Christ. So I just wanted to say God bless you. Happy Father's Day. And uh, hopefully I'll be making more videos. But until then, I'm going to continue to... to Ask that you lift my son Anthony Trejo in prayer, Anthony Trejo Jr., and uh, and just continue to lift my brother Michael Trejo up in prayer. Um, that God breaks his addictions, um, and also my my brother-in-law Manuel Morales. You know he really really needs to to break that addiction to meth. You know and and start taking care of business. I'll just pray that God sends someone his way that he will listen to so that he can break that addiction. You know, and I'm not afraid to, to pray for my family, you know, because we all need it. You know, I was there in an attic for over 17 years, 18 years, you know, and, and God can do it. We can't do it, but God can. So, God bless you guys.